And Congressman, I also want to ask you about President Biden announcing the establishment of a national monument to Emmett yeah. Till, both in Illinois and Mississippi. What does this mean uh, to Illinois? Well, as you know, Emmett Till was from Chicago. He was murdered in August 1955 uh, when he was just visiting his family down south. And um, as you know, his mother, uh, after his murder, made the courageous decision to have an open casket in Chicago during his funeral so that the world could see how this mob had dis so disfigured his son, her son out of hatred. And in some ways, it catalyzed the civil rights movement. It shocked the conscience of a nation that such discrimination and bigotry and prejudice could lead to the death of this young boy in this manner. And so I think it's very important, uh, obviously, uh, for Illinois, where the family was from, uh, but also the South. And you know, contrast that with what you're seeing in Florida, where they're actually passing laws that uh, say that it's OK to teach our children, teach children in Florida, that slavery somehow benefited African Americans. Um, and you'll see kind of the significance of reminding people of the history of what has happened to African Americans in this country. Congressman, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. President Biden, as we heard there, designated the creation of this national monument to Emmett Till and his mother in an event at the White House attended by members of his family and civil rights leaders. Emmett was the black teenager whose lynching in the 1950s consolidated the civil rights movement. The 14-year-old was tortured, murdered, and his body was dumped in a river in Mississippi after a white shopkeeper said he had whistled at her. No one was ever convicted. The monument will also be dedicated to Emmett Till's mother, Mamie Till Mobley, who campaigned for justice. Now, this national monument will cover three separate sites in two states. One site will be in Chicago, Illinois, where Emmett was from and where his funeral was held, and two sites in Tallahatchie County, Mississippi, one where Emmett Till's body was found, and another site at the courthouse where his killers were acquitted in 1955. They later confessed to the murder. Earlier, I spoke with Deborah Watts, Emmett's cousin and the co-founder of the Emmett Till Legacy Foundation. Deborah, thank you so much for joining us in our studio today. What does the Emmett Till and Mamie Till Mobley National Monument mean to you? It means that uh, the story, the name, the sacrifices, the, uh, the nature in which Emmett was murdered, that that story will be told, uh, that those places that are being preserved will be protected. Uh, they are part of the journey that, um, from the life and the legacy of Emmett Till and his mother, Mamie Till Mobley. So it's so important that, that our American history um, has this piece and this moment in time as one that we can all remember. Uh, it's, a, it's a sad story. It's a, a story of pain, um, but from what I call from tragedy to triumph. And that's where we sit today. But we want to make sure that uh, people remember Emmett, remember the sacrifice, understand the story and the truth behind it. So that's what this, this means today for, for me and my family. At the ceremony, President Biden said this, quote, only with truth comes healing, justice repair, and another step forward towards forming a more perfect union. Is this then a step towards healing also for your family and, also, and the sense of justice? Well, um, I, I think, to be very honest with you, <laughs> uh, healing is going to require a lot. You know, we just got a bill passed in Minnesota called the Emmett Lewis Till Victims Recovery Program. And that means that there needs to be an intentional piece of, of, of therapy targeted towards impacted families, including ours. Uh, so that does need to happen. We can't ignore that. That's an important piece. What should that look like? But in terms of the, the therapy, yeah. well, it should look from a professional, that, that people have an opportunity to share their pain, raw pain, and then have, have an opportunity to be on that journey towards healing. It's going to be a journey for, for many of the families. My family, along with, say, Philando Castile's family, Amir Locke's family, um, and, and many others. But um, I think it's, it's towards that. It helps towards that. But justice. You know, there's nothing that you can compare with having true justice. Mm -hmm. That did not happen in Emmett Till's case um, in terms of 
uh, the reality from a judicial perspective. But we try to turn our tragedy into triumph, and that means that we're going to still be on this struggle towards truth, justice, and accountability, and work with other impacted families as well. Maybe we didn't get the justice that we were, were achieving or trying to achieve, but it does also mean that we still have a lot of work to do in this country, and we will be uh, committed to making that happen. How does today impact that? Today is a beginning. You know, it's long overdue that Emmett's uh, name and Mamie Till Mobley's name is, goes down in history the way that it's going to go down in history today. So that, that's a permanent piece, I think, that um, we could not have imagined it, actually. But um, it also means that the story will be told, that the journey that Emmett was on, which includes an ad addition additional um, sites that are in addition to what happened in Chicago with Roberts Temple and the other two sites that they have. In fact, we're going to be on that journey in August, which would be the 68th anniversary of Emmett Till's murder. Mm -hmm. And we're actually taking people on a truth um, uh, tears, truth, and terror tour, educational tour, to uh, visit those sites and others. The president in the ceremony also talked about the banning of books and burying of history in the country. And he said the country has a long way to go to achieve racial justice. Do you yes. agree? I do agree, absolutely. Um, the banning of books is, is trying to erase, you know, a part of our true history and our true nature in America. And we need to I think fight for the truth to be told and also fight for a way forward. If we don't deal with that history, that raw uh, history, there's nowhere for us to go. And so that can't be erased and banning books is not the way to go. And you know, one of the things that, that I often think about and that is how I learned about my own history. And I didn't learn in school unfortunately, but I learned at the seat of my great grandparents. Mm -hmm. I learned, you know, at church, at my church with different organizations. And so I think that means that all of us have a role to play in order to make sure that, that the truth is told about our history and that we have a way to move forward. We cannot move forward unless we understand where we've been. And uh, our youth have to be a part of, of the telling of those stories, like my great my grandchildren are. Last year, the Emmett Till Anti-Lynching Act was passed, and you said at the time it gave you and your family time to exhale. What else do you yes. want to see from the government, from stakeholders, to honor Emmett Till and Mamie Till Mobley's uh, legacy? Well, I think the true story and the full complement of the story needs to be told. I think more people need to know uh, about Mamie Till Mobley and her sacrifice, the kind of woman that she was. That, you know, in her 30s and doing some of the tremendous things that she did. So I think that we have a wonderful opportunity to make sure our young people understand that. And then I think the additional sites that are part of that journey need to have recognition as well. Um, also, having people join us on these an anniversaries because I think it gives us an opportunity to talk about what happened, to use our authentic voices and our platforms uh, and join up with other groups and organizations so that they can carry that story forward. And also connecting with our young people, it's so important that we, um, wherever we are in our, whatever walk of life that we're in, that they are understanding our journey and understanding how they can play a part moving forward as well. Thank you so much for sharing your perspective with us today. Oh, thank you for having me, I appreciate it.